many of us on um, the campus are involved with commencement, a ton of us. But I'm going to talk over the next 45 minutes. I'm going to give you tons of information. No notes, but you can go on the website or you can make your own notes if you wish. At the end, I hope I'm going to do my best because I, Paula McCants, my wonderful colleague, who's one of the people who was heading up today, gave me quite a charge to, to, of information to give to you. So I'm going to try to impart as much as I can. And hopefully, there'll be time at the end for us to talk. Um, so having said that, here's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you a brief history lesson of uh, commencement ceremonies, the tradition in, in Western education. There's also a tradition in Eastern education in China. They've been doing this a long time and uh, probably as long, if not longer, than we have in the West. But we follow the Western tradition here in the US for the most part. I'm going to talk about regalia, so you know who wears what. I'm going to talk about, then I'm really going to get to nitty gritty, important dates, links, resources for you. Talk about the ceremony a little bit and how you can prepare and then hopefully have time for question and answer. So, okay, let's do it. So, um, 700 years of tradition. This is uh, President Doty and Jose Pacheco, our Cheverton Award winner in 2007. Um, commencement ceremonies began in the Middle Ages uh, as initiation rites into crafts, fields of crafts. So you can kind of think of the bachelors, masters, doctors as, you know, journeyman, apprentice, uh, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Jur batch, uh, apprentice, journeyman, uh, master of a craft. That's kind of, it, roughly, it's not exactly that anymore, but that's kind of where that came from. Um, this is the University of Bologna in Italy, and the, they're regarded as the oldest European university still in existence, continually conferring degrees. Uh, they started this in 1088, conferring degrees. The university's older than that, but um, that's when they started conferring degrees. Um, no, I take that back. First recorded academic degree awarded in Bologna in 1160. Still pretty old. This is the University of Paris. Um, by tradition, the second oldest European university, founded in the 1100s and disbanded as a singular institution during the French Revolution. Still exists today as a consortium of, of institutions. The Sorbonne is one. That'll, that would be familiar to you. Um, once the University of Bologna began awarding degrees, the practice of awarding degrees then became adopted by many European um, universities. So if you're Italian, you can feel like you know the Italians did this first. In US, most universities' degree awarding procedures are modeled after the ones developed at the University of Paris in the late 12th and early 13th centuries. Here's Oxford. Who's been to Oxford? Isn't that a great place? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, university of Oxford in England is the oldest university in the English-speaking world and third in the triumvirate of historical ancestors of the commencements we recognize today. Founded sometime in the 1100s, it became a real academic power after 1167 when King Henry II wouldn't let English students go overseas to study. He wanted them to stay uh, in Britain and wouldn't let them go. Tradition holds that academic dress that we model today originated at Oxford in the 12th and 13th centuries pattern on the everyday wear of clerics and copyists of that time. And you can see when, when you think about what we make everybody wear, reflecting the English climate, um, our academic cap, gown, and hood are medieval throwbacks. Here's Oxford today. Um, you can see that the students are wearing different length, length gowns. It's a little washed out. I apologize for that. But um, there's a longer gown on this young woman in the middle of the, of the lane. Um, that I'm not sure what what means what, but the different length of gown signifies what class they're in, where they stand um, at, at school. Some props associated with the pomp of commencement that we still use, and in this picture, you can see the clothes, which if, when you come to commencement, you're gonna see exactly the same clothes. And you see him walking around with what looks like a, a baseball bat on his arm, it's at, on his shoulder, it's actually a mace. And there are two other maces in this picture. We use a mace here as well. Um, that has a particularly ancient origin, goes back to weapons, and was used as a symbolic uh, power 
icon in Rome, um, in Egypt. It's developed into the symbol of the academic authority of the university. And you'll see the mace walk in, the Grand Marshal, for one of our faculty members, it's quite an honor to carry the mace into commencement. Um, means that the authority and power of Chapman University has entered the space, so to speak. This image on the right is a drawing of the meeting of the doctors at the University of Paris. Then there are all kinds of flags and pennants. We call them gonfalons, these things that are hanging down right here in the, on the crossbar. Gonfalons are a specific type of banner, and um, they, uh, it's from the Italian, again, and refers to medieval city-state days when communities in or neighborhoods developed coats of arms or other identifying images specific to themselves. And they'd have athletic contests and, and other kinds of contests, and sometimes they'd fight and kill each other. Yeah, um, they're very handy for, ha for hanging up or marching in procession, and we use those here, you'll see those. This is at the Palio, um, the race, that, that crazy horse race that happens in Italy in 2006. So you can see there's right at the top, and then there are ours. So we have levels of degrees from um, medieval Italy, we have a procedure for awarding degrees that we inherited from medieval France. We have uniform garments that we inherited from medieval England. Symbols of institutional authority from ancient times. And there's one of our commencements at Chapman College in Burt Williams Mall around 1980. And you'll see some, uh, in fact, concurrent with this session, Dr. Barbara Mulch, who's at the podium in this picture, is actually uh, doing a presentation today. She's the director of scholarships and fellowships now. And there's last year. Same stuff. Flowers, podium, people in, in hot wear, um, the mace. You can't see it there in that image. Gonfalon is behind Dr. Hall. It's hard to see, but he's standing at the podium. The gonfalon for that school is right behind him. So who wears what? I love this picture. <laughs> These are our registrar um, marshals walking in with uh, our students at the beginning of pr procession. And the people standing off to the side in the red polo shirts are um, not me, but me and my crew. And you'll see us, if you, in fact, at commencement, if you're, where's the bathroom, where's the this, what time's the that, find a red shirt. Not associated with Italian red shirts, for those of you who know your history. This is a terrible slide, I apologize, but it's the best line drawing I've ever found um, online to share with you. Those are the three levels of degrees and the three gowns. The bachelor's gowns, what your children will be wearing, is the one on the far left. And then in the middle is a master's degree gown, and over on this, towards me, is a doctoral gown. And you'll notice the difference in the sleeves. Um, the doctoral gown has all kinds of trim. That's velvet, that black trim. So here's a bachelor's gown. It has plain pointed choir sleeves, just plain sleeves pretty much. Used to, sometimes they drip, but now with souvenir wear, they're just plain at the bottom. There's no trim, they're just, it's just a gown. And then we have, we branded last year with these cool little tabs that you'll see when you get your gowns um, embroidered with the Chapman seal on there. Um, they wear a black mortarboard. They don't wear hoods, although there is such a thing as a baccalaureate hood, but we don't use them here. Um, and Chapman seniors wear those tabs. Oh, and red and gray tassel on the right. They flip it. It's the only time you flip. For those of you who, who have advanced degrees, you remember when you if, you, if you walked, a lot of people with advanced degrees choose not to. But when, if you graduated from college, sometimes from high school too, they do a flip, right? So it's, it was on the right side and then flip, left, woohoo, as a bachelor's, de bachelor's degree recipient, left on leaving. I always remember it's the one that's over your heart. So, and then after that, you never flip, right? You never flip ever again. If you have a master's degree, doctoral degree, when you were walking in your, in your duds, that stays over left. Left on leaving is how we remember. Here's a master's degree hood. I mean, a master's degree. They have kimono-type sleeves, really handy for putting your your Kleenex down inside. 
No trim, again, in terms of velvet and all that sort of stuff. They also wear black mortarboard on their heads. The appropriate hood um, and the same uh, tassel. Here's this hood. If you can imagine, here, this is such a throwback to medieval times. If you can imagine the pointy part at the, on the left, to upper left, is the part that's next to your, um, to your, your throat. Pull that dude up, you've got a little drip down the back, it's a hood. You'd be wearing it on your head. Interesting, huh? So the velvet trim, this one is light blue for those of you who have education students. This is what your, a master's student in education would wear. And then the satin on the inside denotes the school colors. The school colors for this particular school are white and blue. These are our um, doctor physical therapy students. This is the doctoral gown that we use for our students here. Puffy bell sleeves with three chevrons, velvet trim on the front and the sleeves. They can wear black mortarboard, black is always correct in academic regalia, or a colored velvet tam or a black velvet tam. The gold tassel on the left and the appropriate doctoral hood, which would look like that. Hoods, the, the, bigger, the higher your degree, the bigger your hood. Longer, wider, fancier. The, the, the velvet trim is wider. It's very interesting. We also award honorary doctoral degrees here at Chapman. It's the highest degree we can um, honor we can put on uh, someone. And uh, this was Leon Lason last year uh, getting a doctoral degree in humane letters at Wilkinson College commencement. They wear a black doctoral gown, black mortarboard with a gold tassel on the left, um, and um, a doctoral hood in a color that's appropriate to the degree being awarded. So you'll see that his velvet is white because he was getting an arts and humane letters, which is, is appropriate to that degree. Here's how our trustees and governors look. Our fancy gowns. I'm so proud of these gowns. These are new. Um, last year was the first year we used them. They are just stunning. Wait till you see them. So a trustee gown, it's special. No one else can wear them but trustees and governors. Um, they have a uh, cardinal tam with attached gray tassel worn on the left and a medallion on the ribbon. They look very fancy. Okay, so let's talk about, let's get down to nuts and bolts. Important dates and links. Listed online on the internet for everybody at chapman.edu slash commencement is the commencement homepage. When you hit that landing page, you'll see the weekend schedule. Depending on what degree your child is getting, it depends on what school he or she is housed in academically. Um, that's the ceremony that they will participate in. If your child is a double major, he or she has to pick. There's a default. That, you know, just because of the way the academic record is, there's some default. So a kid with a double major, his, he or she may have a it housed in Wilkinson, although he has a n double major say in business. He will we will ask him to tell us when he or she RSVPs, which one you want to walk with. They can walk with one or the other, but not both. If they're earning, so this would be, say, a BA in history and a BA in business. BA, it's a common degree with two majors. A dual degree earner, those guys who just want to earn two degrees at one time, a BFA, for instance, and a BA, or a BS and a BA, they may walk in both ceremonies if they choose to. The policy here at Chapman is you walk once for each degree you earn. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, the deadline calendar is also on this page. There's a link to, on the left-hand nav bar on this homepage that says criteria for walking. And that's how it is that it explain who can walk, who's who is qualified to participate. And at the bottom of that page is a deadline calendar. Listed online for students, which you will not be able to get into unless you have your, your students log in, at my window, our uh, intranet portal is um, information, complete information for the students. They have more information on this page than you do on the internet. Um, it's under student tab, under academics, to commencement and um, links and all that sort of stuff is there for them. And then reminders and alerts are posted on the commencement e-news. We have a new newsletter form. It's like a blog, so that's why the only you can't you can't talk back. 
we talk to you, but they can't talk back. So um, blogs.chapman.edu slash commencement. And we're uploading often information. We're trying to feed the students information as, it, as they need it and also build some excitement around commencement for them, um, trying to get them to pay attention. Because especially anybody who's got who's got film major people in here, <laughs> you're probably gonna call me on the phone. I really the, the film majors this year it's very difficult. This semester's real hard for them. So sometimes this stuff will just go like by, and then three weeks before commencement, you're like, did they do this? Did they do that? Are we done? Because the child's been out on a you know on the set filming. So. They have to, have to, have to do this. These are the must-dos. They have to apply for degree conferral. Whether they walk or not, they have to apply for degree conferral. This is the only way we know they're done. So it was due January 1st. Ask your child if he or she has done this. Um, and the way that they do it is in Web, Web Advisor. It's a login required. You can do it for them if you have their login, if you have permission from your child. If not done already, do it now. Don't wait. Not kidding. <laughs> this is how they get on our list to participate. Not everybody participates at Chapman. Um, about 85% of our students participate, but we don't know unless they tell us. So then they have to tell us. So they have to RSVP to participate. This form goes online next week. The login is required at, it's a secure login. You can do it for them again if you have their login, but otherwise they have to do it um, at web.chapman.edu commencement. The link is gonna be in that e-newsletter uh, in my window for the students and on the internet probably also for them. The preferred deadline is April 1st for inclusion in the printed program. Get them to do this. It takes five minutes. Doesn't cost them any money. When was the last time Chapman said it didn't cost you anything? <laughs> so um, preferred ed deadline is April 1st to make sure that they get put in the printed program. If they're May conferrals, if they're finishing, they're most likely going to be in there anyway, whether they walk or not. But if they're walking short, we need to know that they're going to be walking. And they need to RSVP and tell us. The online RSVP closes May 13, no exceptions. I don't want anybody calling me while I'm trying to build a venue for 10,000 people out here going, can I walk? I forgot. I'm like, where have you been for the last six weeks? Where have you been for the last three months? What planet are you on? So just, yeah, yes, you know, you know. Okay, third, by cap and gown. This is required. If they're not wearing regalia, they can't walk. Same thing for the, for the, um, faculty. If they're not wearing regalia, they can't walk either. Again, online ordering opens next week. You purchase at um, www.cbgrad.com. That's our vendor. Only the cap and gown and tassel package is required. Everything else is optional. Commencement is a racket. It is. And I mean, I'm not saying I don't want you to have fun and buy everything that you can afford to buy, but you do not need a diploma frame. You do not need the stoles. You don't need the cords and all that other stuff. This is what you need. It's about $48 plus shipping mailed directly to the purchaser, either to you or to your child, whatever um, address you specify. And the final date to order is May 8th to get the regalia in time. Um, yeah, I don't mean to sound cynical, but I'm also a wedding minister, and so that's a racket too. <laughs> yes. Can you just get the cap and if you have, if you can get a gown from a student who walked last year, or we have several gowns. well, what we did with this branding with the tabs, if you have a plain black gown, the child will not match everybody else. Okay, gotcha. okay thank you. But you could do that if you want. Nobody's going to say they can't walk, but it's up to you. Fourth is print the passport to walk. This is new and I can't tell you too much about it. We are very excited about this, which is that the, after the student RSVPs, they will receive um, a confirmation email that has a link to a place where they will print out their passport. It's their reader card. They have to print it out, bring it to commencement with them. We hope it will 
speed up the check-in and line-up process where they'd have to check in, stand in line, get the reader card, which is printed by the office of registrar. Um, in, instructions will be forthcoming. So the child prints that out somewhere, brings it with him or her, goes, hello, I've got my thing, goes off to line up, um, or comes out and sees you for a few minutes, goes back into lineup, goes into procession. That is the thing that gets handed to the reader on stage who reads Susanna Branch, you know, and then keeps it because it goes to the photo people for identifying who is who. And um, so we'll let you know more about that as it's developed, but um, we just think we're really fancy to do that. Fifth is, of course, to show up. Review the lineup instructions online in advance. The registrar usually almost always makes this cool little funny video that explains we don't do rehearsal here, we just can't. It's, it's logistically not possible for us. So um, they do a video and the student watches the video and understands what kind of what's gonna happen and how to line up in advance. Be on time, bring the passport, pay attention and follow staff directions. We're there to help the students and to have a lot of fun. Optional things, okay, so now we're to the part where you can spend your money if you want. Um, announcements are available at cbgrad.com. It's the same vendor that does the, the cap and gown for us. Actually, they're different vendors, but it's a one-stop shop for you. So, um, stoles and cords. Purchase locations vary, it depends. There's a stole that's available with the cap and gown. If you want to buy that, you're going to find your kids are going to want to buy all manner of things. If they're Greek, if they're in an organization, if they have some kind of ethnic heritage that they want to celebrate and show off. Um, stoles, cords, they look like Christmas trees. It's very colorful. Um, yearbooks are gratis. It, it's part of the fee that the student pays at the beginning of the year, and all the undergrads will have one on their seat um, at, on commencement day. You can contribute to the Senior Legacy uh, Project to alumni, they would love that. You can also buy your child flowers on commencement day. There will be vendors on campus to, um, to sell you bouquets and lays. Lays are really hot here. If you're from the East Coast, it's like, yeah, whatever. But here in, in the West, lays are so popular. Okay, who does what? As I mentioned, lots of us are involved with commencement, but I want you to know the three that, that affect you, that your child is going to, to need to understand to help, how to be, how, where to get help. This, this is the main thing, where to get help. The Office of Academic Advising. You may know about this already, and hopefully you do. Consults with students during the semester to keep them on track. Um, to make choices about what they need to do, to tell them what the policy is, um, help student lo students locate resources and meet graduation goals. Um, they prefer to be contacted by phone, which is 714-744-7959 to make an appointment for your child. So if a, a Kid will call me and go, I have this many units and can I, can I don't know and I, you know, what do I need to take? And I go, I don't know, I'm not an academic person. I order chairs for commencement. So academic advising is, there, is the professional um, arm of Chapman to talk to the students about um, these issues. This is huge, I'm sorry, I apologize for that. I know, I know my PowerPoint. Um, etiquette, and this is too deep, but um, the Office University Registrar is your behind-the-scenes friend. They are sitting in um, an office, and they are crunching the academic records for your children. Um, they process the applications for degree conferral. I don't. I don't have anything to do with that. They provide the name listings by degree for the print and commencement program, which is why we have that big deadline, that early deadline. They have to process the names, double check them, make sure they're in the right pew, get them over to our publications and marketing people. The publications and marketing people have to format, blah, 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 then it has to go to print. And for us to get all of that back in time, that's why we have such an early deadline. They organize the procession and the seating order. They, are, they man the student check-in and lineup on commencement day. They keep order in the student seating and um, usher within the student seating. They get the students to and from the stage as well. 
They provide the diploma covers given on the stage. There's no diploma on commencement day, just a cover with a nice little letter inside. We mail diplomas out, the, um, and that's what they do. So at the end of, so your child has said, I'm graduating in May, and with the application for degree conferral online, after May's over, all of a sudden the registrar gets flagged with all these students that said, I'm done in May, and they're gonna check every single academic record of every student that says, I'm done in May. If they're done, they'll print out a diploma, and if they don't, if they don't owe any money, they'll print out a diploma and be sent in the mail to the permanent address on the academic record. That's why the application for degree conferral is so important. And then they're gonna mail that diploma. If you have questions about academic records or diplomas or any of that stuff, if a child hasn't gotten a diploma, usually they're pretty quick. Should be within a month or so after commencement's over. And you're going, where's the diploma? Ma, I didn't get my diploma. You're gonna write them. And they may write you back and go, well, he's not done, or he owes the library 50 cents. Seriously, things, I mean, it'll just all get, if, if things aren't completely closed out, diploma won't be mailed out. So conferral at chapman.edu is your resource for that. The Office of the Chancellor, this is where I am. We alert qualified students about commencement. So we're kind of the communication um, hub for commencement. We produce the website and the e-news. We prepare the ceremony venues. Um, we produce and coordinate the university-wide commencement. So even though um, your child is going to graduate from Wilkinson College, and Wilkinson staff does a lot of the work. I sit at, a, at the hub, like the spider in the web, and um, make sure that everybody's doing what they need to do, that we're abiding by policy and protocol. Um, we produce the printed program, we, um, meaning that we insert all the other content other than the names. Um, and we work with creative services to produce it. We recruit and train event staff. We're the liaison with the faculty and the platform parties. We implement the events alongside the schools and colleges teams. The assistant chancellor adjudicates any policy issues that come up, which is not often anymore, but if there is anything. And you contact us at commencement at chapman.edu. So let's walk. Here's what happens. Maybe not in this particular order, but pretty much in this particular order. It's a great picture of President Doty. These are elements that are included, and there may not be every single thing, but will probably be nearly all of these things. Participants line up backstage. Participants are um, the students, the faculty, the 50-year club uh, at Wilkinson. Those are 50-year alums, our golden grads, and um, the platform party. Then there's a procession. Then there are welcome and introductions. There are special honors, the honorary degrees, medals, faculty award um, acknowledgments, things like that. Then there are speeches, if there are any. There's been a trend um, in the US and Canada lately to eliminate speeches. Um, last year, we had one ceremony without a speech. Nobody missed it. Then the students walk across the stage. Then they're conferred, and President Doty will, by the power vested in me, you know, you now have this degree. Then we have a recession, and then we have hospitality. And if you think about it, this is every single element that goes into any ritual that you ever go to. This is a ritual. A wedding, church, right? This is a ritual, which is why we take it very seriously here. We're not solemn about it, but um, but this is, this is a big deal. And, and we follow this tradition. Again, this, this huge, you know, 700 year tradition of how these things are done. So here's what you need to do and encourage your children to do as well. Just stay informed. Check the e-news often, visit the website, call me, um, ask, Academic advising. Registrar may or may not answer your questions about commencement because they're very busy with other things. Registrar is not only doing this, they're also taking care of, of all the classes of every single student that's here. They take care of registration. Um, they're very, very busy. 
Observe the deadlines and policies that we have set. Plan your travel and your lodging and your social schedule early. Yay on Terry because she's got her lodging already. And what will happen is May is really busy in this area. You know, that's when things are cranking up at Disneyland. There are, May's a big convention month at Anna, in Anaheim at the Anaheim Convention Center. You know, we can call and go, do you have rooms? And they'll go, no, I'm sorry, the dental convention's here. Ah. So call early and, and get your lodging. You know, plan your weekend. Schedule's up. So just make your plans and, and get that stuff done now. Check specific departments and alumni, the alumni office, for end of year events. I do the commencement events, but there are tons of things happening within your department or your, your school. Banquet events, honors events, all that sort of stuff that children may not want to miss those. Um, Dodge has a wonderful gala at the end of every year. I mean, it's like an Oscar party. It's huge and fancy. And, there, and many of the departments will have their own little special social things that you may not be invited to, but you might not want your, your student to miss. So just encourage them to, to do that. And then when you're getting ready for the real day, check the weather forecast. We're in Southern California. We have no rain plan. It's too big. I have no place I can put everybody indoors anyway. So if it's raining, we're, we're, we're running, unless it's not, unless it's a safety issue, at which point we'd cancel commencement. And that's never happened at Chapman, knock on wood. But <clears throat> if it's hot, and we have had days here that have been hotter than a pistol, I mean hot. So you're going to want to prepare for that, it, where, what you're wearing, um, bring water. We'll have water available for the students and also for, for you too, but bring water. Um, wear hat, wear sunscreen if it's going to be hot. Celebrate wisely. Make sure you build in time to rest, that, that you eat and you have your kids eat. They're busy. They're drinking. You know, make them eat. <laughs> They'll feel a lot better. And, and drink moderately. Agree on a location to find each other after the ceremony. So it, it's quite a crush after each ceremony, particularly the larger ones that take place over here on Wilson Field. Um, and so just strategize in advance. If you, if you want to find each other, then you may want to go, I'm, I'll meet you by the Panther, I'll meet you by Global Citizens, I'll meet you. Sometimes that's a really helpful thing to do. <gasps> we rock. Please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you so much. Good luck. <laughs>